please welcome Paul Ray. I have just one job here, which is to convince you that you have a real market out there and there's plenty of money to make everything you want to do work. I know we've got a world of suits and creators. Well, this is for all the suits in the audience to say there's about a hundred and twenty billion dollar market in cultural creatives entertainment. And I'll come back to that number, but I just want you to hear that kind of number. That's billion with a B. Uh, so, let's see here. Yes. We're living in a world of media illusion. The US news media in particular is stuck with an image of the culture wars of 60 years ago, the Eisenhower years, okay? Hey, what happened to PowerPoint? <laughs> it's still got that ugly guy up there, okay, there. All right, so the culture wars of 50 years ago, there was only two kinds of people. There were the city slickers and there were the country folk, you know, small town people. The city slickers were the secular materialist, whoops, <laughs> kind of folks. And the, then there was the conservative and pious kind of folks. You know, the people who were hip and up to date against the square and out of date people. Style and efficiency against character and reliability. You've all seen the old movies, Cary Grant uh, compared to Jimmy Stewart, Lauren Bacall compared to June Allison. Well, that is still what you hear in, in American politics, like nobody else is there. Because uh, they were, 60 years ago, were 50-50. Now, in the marquee lights there down at the bottom, you see new numbers. The traditionals, the country folk who were 50% have shrunk to 15.4% and there's a bunch of people who have just started to defect from them who I call the transitionals who are heavily blue collar men and they're another 10% of the population. They want to have green clean jobs because the factories have been shut down and the moderns have shrunk from 50% to just under 40%. The people who have appeared on the scene, I call cultural creatives because they're literally creating a new culture. And they've been at it since the 1960s. In the 60s, we might have seen a first sign of them, but they would have been fewer than 4% of the population, too few to really pick up reliably in surveys. Today, they're They've been growing at, at basically at 3% a year compounded annually uh, since the 60s. So today they're up to 35%. And the group you really want to reach first are people exactly like you. And I'll show, show you what I mean by that in just a couple of minutes. But they would have loved this whole program tonight, I tell you. It's, it's just... You, you've hit the sweet spot, John. Uh, you, you really have, uh, because this is the core group of cultural creators. 16% of the American uh, adults in America. There's 224 million adults in the United States. About 24 million of those are people who don't speak English very well. Chinese and Spanish are usually the languages. Uh, so the, call it 200 million. So you've got 32 million people who basically buy where you're coming from and they are ticked off with TV. They don't like most of what they see on TV. They will love what you guys have to offer. Then there's some, in addition, there's some people who are primarily green culture creatives who are worried about the condition of the planet and worried about ecology 
and global warming and, and social responsibility, things like that. The core group are spiritual and green. They do the whole nine yards. So, so everything we've been talking about tonight is just honey to their ears. So one way to think about this is a, you've got a core group who actually talk to each other. They blog uh, to each other. They are densely connected networks and so on. And out around the periphery are the Greens who imitate the core group, pick up on ideas from them. And then the transitional guys are still one foot in traditional life and one foot in the green cultural creatives. So that's, that's that th di target diagram up there uh, on the far right. Now, if you make a pie chart of it, the moderns are still 40%. The traditionals have shrunk. They were, t the last time, uh, this is from a 2008 survey. Uh, the, the last time I did it before that, around 2000, the traditionals were 25% and they've had a bunch of defectors in the last 10 years. That's basically what we're looking at. So uh, I have been doing values and lifestyles research now for since 1986. So it's, it's been a while that I've, I've been at this. Uh, the reason I do values research is that values are simply much better predictors of what you're actually gonna do than anything else. And the values are our most important life priorities, and they're often very closely related to how we interpret the world, what we think is real, what you want the country to be like, how you want your children to live, and so on. And the most important cultural creative value is loving nature and being very deeply concerned about its destruction. Uh, it's not the spirituality alone that a lot of youth uh, are thinking in terms of, a lot of these folks take nature as sacred, and that's a very important aspect of what we're talking about. Oh my God, can you believe that Newman and Redford were ever that young? <laughs> so, but relationships and altruism are a big deal with cultural creatives. Women's issues and spirituality are closely interconnected with cultural creatives. And for the longest time, we found that women were taking the lead, really creating the change in American life uh, in, in, in values. Only in the 2008 survey had the men finally caught up with the women. Now, my, my wife will never forgive me if I don't tell this little uh, story. Uh, one of the things, one of the ways you know that you're a cultural creative is if you hear your women friends complaining, where are all the good men? <laughs> yes. So uh, the answer to them is you didn't do anything wrong in your life, dear. You're just in your tribe. There's just fewer men than women. And you've got to get some of those modern men and kind of pull them along and, you know, that like that. But in fact, now the cultural creative men have finally caught up in numbers with the women and it's basically balanced. Uh, another, another aspect of cultural creatives is that they are movement people. They've been involved in the women's movement, peace movement, ecology movement, jobs and social justice, whole foods type, organic foods, uh, alternative health care, and so on. That's Ben Cohen over there. Uh, ben and Jerry's ice cream wearing the Uncle Sam hat, in case you didn't recognize him, w with an admiral. Uh, and it was, was when they were going around in buses having uh, clown-type uh, workshops. Anti-globalization. There are cultural creatives in Japan, there are cultural creatives in Western Europe, and they have the same 35% of their population that we have here. And, uh, the anti-globalization is yet another movement that brought cultural creatives into existence. And of course, there's, if you got values, there are things you reject. And the materialism and getting and spending of the 
media-driven money culture is a big deal for culture creatives to reject. The Kali Lassen name there should ring a bell with you because they were the ones who suggested the Occupy movement. They're, they're in Vancouver, actually. And, of course, social justice. This is a photograph of the crowd in one of Martin Luther King's rallies. I don't know if it's a famous speech in Washington, D.C. or another one, but social justice and social responsibility is a big deal for cultural creatives. And so is spirituality and personal growth. And so is having a linkage of the personal change with planetary change so that, and also seeing that you have to take care of the elders with, and elder wisdom and the generations to come. If you said, what's going on with cultural creatives and ecology and global warming? The answer is, people are worried about what's going to happen to their children or if they're old enough to their grandchildren. That worry about the condition of future generations is a big deal in American life and also in Western European life. So, why should you want to do the cultural creatives? Well, one reason is that it's cheaper to mobilize them if you tap into their networks, because they are opinion leaders on all the issues that you care about in GATE. They are people who blog, they're, basically they're network hubs, to use uh, a phrase that's going around a lot. They tell stories, the cultural creatives love stories. They shape opinions and networks because through their blogs. Uh, they they have, they're treated as resources for new ideas and innovations. They're the, they're the go-to people for if you're trying to figure out if something new is worthwhile. So these are the readers and writers of American life. They blog, they write articles, they write books, they read books and they're very active in their communities. Now, let's get to the media use issues. So I've done a fair amount of surveys. Uh, what's not on here is internet use because they're just exactly the United States average on media use of, of, for the internet. Uh, they're just very efficient at it. They get on, they, they get the information they want, and they get off. And so there's not anything very interesting happening there. But look at these. They watch more movies and rent more videos, and I'm sure they do more downline streaming already uh, than anybody else. They watch half as much TV as the U.S. average. They are pissed off with what they see on television. Okay, and there is a gigantic opportunity. There's a gigantic opportunity in the movies for TV industry uh, to reach cultural creatives through GATE. So uh, they listen to much more radio, they go to much more live performances, art shows, galleries, workshops, readings, etc. They keep those alive. Uh, they read twice as many books literally twice as many books as anybody else in American life. And they read more general market magazines and more lifestyle targeted magazines. Now, one of, the, one of the things about why are they this way, the answer is these are some of the best informed people in American life. Best informed means they have made their own picture of the world and they want your help in interpreting events, interpreting where the country is going, interpreting where the planet is going. If you give them good paradigms for interpretation, you're their friend because they know that the old ways are breaking down. They call themselves bridge people a lot. They bridge between the old culture and the new stuff that's coming up. And this is a very important role for GATE. The whole idea of GATE is to help supply mythic paradigms and explanatory paradigms for what's new and how the world ought to be going. If all we do is run away from what we are feared of, 
then it's being like an anthill that somebody stamped on, everybody running off in all sorts of diverging directions. If on the other hand we start collectively building a positive image of the future, then we've got something we can converge on. And that is something that cultural creatives really buy into. And I'll tell you a crucial thing as a social scientist, without a mythic, story-driven, media-driven picture of what that desirable future looks like, with heroes and heroines to go with, and stories to go with, we won't get there. This is why GATE is so darn critical. So the core group of cultural creatives can actually create a tipping point for a wave of cultural change because they have had the experience of the new social movements. They've been involved, they know how it works. They're more active, they're more planet-oriented, more spiritual, and they're personal development-oriented, more than the Greens and way more than anybody else in American society. And just to remind you, there are 32 million adults plus all their kids. We can't do value surveys on kids, uh, so uh, there's, there's a lot of kids coming along who are saying to their parents, well, you only talk about these things. I'm going to do it. <laughs> okay, the money. 41 million cultural creatives households. Those households by the current population survey spend $120 billion a year on entertainment and books. That's in the census, population census, the annual 50,000 people survey that the government does. There are 19 million core group of the cultural creatives, your early market, and they spend $54 billion a year on entertainment and books. So have I got any suits out here in the crowd? Will you hold up your hands? <laughs> Is that enough money for you? <laughs> yes? Okay, good. Then, then we're settled. This is a practical enterprise. This is not just feel-good stuff. This, this is something we can all work with and really make a go of. End of lesson. <laughs>